discuss how to get prepared to drain an abscess. First thing is you want to lay out your equipment prior to doing the procedure. That way you don't have to leave the bedside and come back. The procedure equipment is generally right here. We have a number 11 scalpel. We have a syringe and needle and local anesthetic. Local anesthetic can be 1% xylocaine. You don't need 2%. Some people prefer to use it with epinephrine, but there's really no great advantage except that it lasts a little bit longer in pain relief. Packing gauze. It's in various sizes. One quarter inch to a half inch is probably the best one to do. This is a general surgical uh, repair kit, a laceration kit. There's, no, there's often uh, no general IND kit, although some hospitals have one that have a, 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 a scalpel in it and uh, some sort of other equipment, but generally a laceration kit is probably best to use. Some 4x4s to soak up the drainage, and this is a um, vessel loop which is used in the operating room to identify blood vessels. It's a long plastic sort of string that is one way to drain an abscess without doing a big incision and drainage. Alright, so the first thing one does is to put on some gloves. You generally don't need mask or a headgear or a gown. The gloves should be size that fits your hands. The big floppy gloves that some people with small hands wear just looks unprofessional. You don't need sterile gloves, regular uh, uh, gloves out of the box is absolutely fine. But make sure they fit your finger well so you'll be able to feel and work with them. Now in order to get anesthesia, this, is, this comes in a, a break off vial. Some of them come in a bottle that has a rubber uh, tubing over it that you can drain. This one will just, sometimes you'll Make sure you do it away from you so you don't cut your hand. You put it down and then notice if you put these upside down they don't drain out. So you put your needle, this is a 22 gauge needle, put it in the anesthesia. Again it doesn't drip. For some reason the surface tension keeps it in there. And you're going to use about 3 to 5 mLs of local anesthetic in order to get the proper amount of anesthesia. Remember this should be a generally, after the anesthesia is given, a generally painless procedure. You can't get all the pain away. If you have a big abscess, some people will use some intravenous fentanyl or morphine or Dilaudid prior to the incision and drainage. Now this needle you would take off and replace with a 25 gauge needle. It's best to use the short 25 gauge needle, not the inch and a half one, because it's a little easier to control. I'm going to keep on this uh, 21 gauge needle you because know, it's easier to see, but just, just assume that this is a short 25 gauge uh, needle that you're going to use on your syringe. I would suggest using a 5 ml syringe as probably your best one. How to identify an abscess? An abscess is usually easily seen as a rounded, swollen area that's quite tender. Patients know it as a boil, so you can use the word abscess, but if you use the word boil, sometimes you'll understand exactly what it is. You can tell them it's a collection of pus that comes from an infection, and um, generally, you oftentimes don't know what caused it, but sometimes it's due to a foreign body, or sometimes it's used for intravenous drug users, uh, but other people just get these MRSA abscesses, that form and are called uh, cutaneous abscesses because they're in the, in the tissue. So this is what it looks like on the top. It's round. If you look at it from the side, it has a bulge to it. Uh, usually if you push the top of the abscess down it hurts and you can also feel the fluid underneath. If there's ever a question about there's an abscess there or not, you can use an ultrasound probe. Just put the ultrasound on top of it and you should be able to see a fluid collection with the ultrasound. That's sometimes used if they're deeper abscesses and you can't really tell whether or not there's going to be fluid in it. Sometimes early on these abscesses are just soft tissue swellings and you won't get any fluid out of them. Some people will aspirate the abscess first to assume there's pus in there. I don't think in most cases you need to do that. But uh, sometimes if there's a question or you want to localize the pus, you can just aspirate pus out with a regular needle. The way to get anesthesia, again this should be relatively painless, is to
use your 25 gauge short bevel, short, uh, short needle, and this is the abscess. This is the skin overneath, and you go parallel to the skin and try to get it in that thin layer between the epidermis and the dermis. Now, some abscesses it's very thin and you just can't do it, but most of them you can. And this is looking at it from the top. You're going right in the middle of the abscess, and you only have to stick the patient one time. Don't need to withdraw to find out that uh, you've got any blood vessels. That's not an issue. But you put it right in the middle of the dome of the abscess, and you leave it there. And then you slowly inject your anesthesia, and you'll see a whitening going out from the middle of the syringe around the abscess as the anesthetic goes not in the abscess and not out into the air but in this layer and it just goes over the top of the abscess. Uh, you want to try to get your whitening of the skin maybe a half a centimeter or so around the edge of the abscess. That way the skin is also have some anesthesia. If you can't do it in this manner you can just go down from the top and do a field block where this is the top of the abscess looking down, you just put your needle in about four or five different spots around the edge of the abscess and wait about a minute or so and you should get complete anesthesia. You don't have to go very deep. You only have to go maybe a half a centimeter because most of the painful nerve endings are in the top of the abscess and in the skin. So now that you have your anesthesia, you can get ready to drain your abscess. This is a regular suture kit, has all you need, sometimes a little bit more. This is not a sterile procedure, so you don't have to worry about keeping sterility. Some people like to put a gauze pad over the abscess. This is to put your equipment on. This has usually one that has a doesn't have a hole in it, but some of them have a hole in it. One way to get a hole is to just Take it like that, tear off the top, and then open it up and put it over your abscess. This is sort of an option. Some people like it. It makes it a little bit cleaner and keeps everything a little bit uh, more controlled. This has a syringe, so you might wait to drop your anesthesia. And again, it's not sterile, so you don't have to worry about being sterile here. You might wait to open this up before you drop your anesthetic. It has curved hemostat, forceps, scissors, a straight hemostat, and this particular kit has in it a 25 gauge needle that has a very short length to it so it's easy to control and it also has a bigger needle that you can use to draw up the anesthesia. Is the bigger needle, so you drop the anesthesia, don't stick yourself, change the needle, and use the small one to give the anesthetic into the dome of the abscess. You can open up your gauze, easily taken out with your <coughs> this happens to be an inch gauze. Some people like to fill this with betadine uh, or peroxide. Betadine is probably best and that way you figure out, say it's a small abscess, you only need about this much packing. Remember you don't have to put in the whole bottle full and stick it in the liquid and that way with, when it's full of betadine it's easier to put in and it makes it uh, a little more uh, pliable to put into the base of the abscess. So now you're ready to go to drain the abscess.
Testing. I didn't think it was going to be this much drama.